All right, so what we talked about on Twitter last time also applies here, in that if I search a hashtag or any keyword, um, so hashtag, I don't know, uh, gluten-free, remember, no spaces. So if I search hashtag gluten-free for my bakery, and I'm going to see collections and communities, notice these two are the ones that are prominent first. So that should be telling us, why don't I have a collection about gluten-free stuff? We'll see how to create them in a moment. Why don't I join or use communities? These are the things that show up first when someone searches. That's Google sort of telling you, why don't you take advantage of collections or communities? We'll see that in just a moment. But let's say I skip those, and then we've got here, posts by people or companies. Kendra shared this, Dr. Josh sh shared that, and Marie shared that. All of these people using these hashtags, and yes, breaking the rules about too many hashtags. <laughs> but let's say they do it legitimately, like let's say you do it legitimately. How about some delicious gluten-free sausage egg muffins? Make them now and easily to reheat. Great, I'm enticed with that photo, maybe I'm enticed, and then I click the link. That's the big secret of all the social media. Something, picture or text to entice, and then a link. Let's say I'm selling a recipe for this. Well, the link over to buy the recipe. A little quick preview of it, but the link to buy. We saw that on, on Twitter. Searching, you find content. Okay, what we also talked about on Twitter was, if you follow, you will get some follow-backs. You will build some audience when you follow accounts. When you use hashtags, it's a little more effective. Type something, at a hashtag, someone might follow you, because someone's searching for those keywords, those hashtags that you tagged your stuff with. What I also said previously, follow other accounts. Here's how you do it on Google+. Let's say Kendra. I click on the person's name or their icon. It takes me to their profile. Kendra, a little bit of, you know, branding and graphic and such, 844 followers, and that little tagline, those 10-word taglines. And then I click follow. Here is that organization that comes into play. On Twitter, I click follow and I follow. <coughs> all the 100 that I followed, all the 1,000, I follow them all. But on Google Plus, what I can do is organize them into circles, into groups, into folders. And at the moment, I have the following circle, the customer circle, the VIP circle, and the team member circle. I can make more circles over on the people screen. I can make this folder for these people, this folder for that people, this circle. But right now I've got these built in. A circle called following. I'm following these. A circle called customers. These are my customers. A circle called VIPs. And a circle called team members. Let's say I want to follow Kendra. And so I put her into the customers circle. She got a notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. That's it. Not Victor's Bakery put you into the customer circle. They will not know the circle you put them into. So if you make a circle called annoying people, <laughs> put them in there, they won't know that they're annoying people. That they're in the annoying people circle. At the top right corner there's a little bell, just like Twitter. Well, theirs was in the middle. But that bell will give you a number eventually. You got a new follower. You got a new reply. You got this. You got that. Notifications. So when I click customer here, Kendra got a notification. At the minimum, she will see that and say, great, new follower. At the best, she will go to my profile and follow me. If my profile is filled in with graphics and the description, and I've posted three to five to ten things, just like Twitter, if I have something to entice people to follow me, they may follow me. Just because I followed and I have nothing to show for it, I probably will not get followers back. Why? There's nothing for me to pay attention to. And you can put people in more than one circle. And then I no longer want to follow, well, I take them away. They don't get that notification that they were unfollowed. But they do get it when they are followed. Can you create more circles? Yes, like I said, in the people screen right here, we can create more circles. And I really want to do that eventually because if I'm a if I'm a bakery 
and I'm going to share something that's gluten-free and something that's um, you know um, lactose intolerant friendly I want to share something specifically to those people so I want to make circles let's say I added that customer he got the notification I go back and do the same thing with Taylor also I'm, right, I'm just choosing random people and clicking follow you, you should do this a little bit more uh, judiciously in that you you look at what have they posted because when you choose to follow an account all their stuff will show up on your home screen you will see what they're posting you don't want to follow then crazy people that are posting crazy things just because you want new followers because you're gonna see their stuff that's the point of a follow you want follows you want people to follow you that's why you're gonna post stuff for them to see that's valuable let me follow I want to see more of it and that's why you're gonna post something once a week once a month once a day whatever timetable you have so that you can continue to get people to follow you and pay attention to you and you're not always going to do the buy this buy that you see the rules being broken a lot knew this knew that everything's new for her but you're gonna post something that is inspirational something that is fun something that is interesting mixing it up with something about buy this follow that don't forget to subscribe sale this Saturday I'm gonna mix it up so again let's see someone else randomly the recipe rebel okay and then I'm looking there was one recipe and everything else else are political rants I don't want to hear about so maybe not follow you have to decide if you want to follow accounts and also the thing about it is you're not always gonna get a one-to-one -one follow you follow someone they may or may not follow you back that's a little different than Facebook I send a friend request on Facebook someone approves it we both agree to follow each other I request a follow here I follow them but she never has to reply and click refollow <coughs> so she doesn't see my stuff she's I see hers but she never sees mine so eventually then at some point I might decide well that didn't work out so I come back to her screen here and click unfollow do they see it when you don't follow them? they don't see that well if I'm spending once a day let's say let's say my goal is once a day every day this week I'm gonna log into to, to, to Google Plus do a little searching and resolve to follow five new accounts. So for this whole week, I followed 25 new people. Next week, you know, five more every day. So little by little, I'm getting more. Fo I'm following more accounts. Some of those will follow you back. Some of them will not. If I go back then to the people screen, I might get suggestions. But these suggestions don't work as well until you start to use it more because it will know who you followed, what you post, what you might like. It'll tell you following. Here's who you're following. Here's your circles. And here's your followers. So on this particular account, here's these followers. Who am I following on this account? Well, I've got the following circle, the customer circle, VIPs, team members. New circle. Cat people. I'm a, I'm a pet shop. I want to share stuff only to the cat people. I want to create another one for the dog people. Only you see this. You can create as many as you want. And let's say I've got someone in customers, so I click on a circle. Kendra's there, Taylor's there. I can change the settings, I can delete the circle. She's in this circle here. I can click on the edge here. Okay, I no longer want to follow them. I'm not, I'm not following them anymore. It's listed there, but it says there's only one person in the circle. It doesn't go away. It should take it away to sh fully show you that you're no longer following. But let's say I no longer want to follow them. But actually, I want to put them under cat people. So now she's under cat people. Right there. 
So this people screen here is where you manage who are you following, do I want to unfollow, who are my followers. I might get followers that I'm not following. I may want to follow them back, or I don't have to. You don't have to reciprocate. You got 17 followers, you don't have to follow them all because maybe one of those followers posts stuff that you don't want to hear about. It's not related to your business. You don't care. You don't have to follow back. You don't have to feel bad that you didn't follow someone else back. Now, you feel bad when you followed someone and didn't get a follow back, but you don't have to follow back. And this find people will become more useful the more you use Google Plus because it says here, there's one in common. I followed this person and that person is correct, connected to Ron. Well, I followed this one person because they were all about, you know, food. So perhaps Ron is also someone good to follow. I wouldn't click the follow right away, however. I would click their profile to see what are they about. Well, actually, they're about photography. Well, maybe I might not follow. Maybe I will follow. It's up to you. Now the much more effective way to do this, because following has some effectiveness, but the more effective ways are collections. Let's go look at collections on the left. And collections are just ways for you to organize your posts. When I'm on the home screen and I click to add a new post, right now what's going to happen is it goes over to public. This is where I can select. Send this instead to a particular circle, cat people. And dog people, if I wanted to. Let me back up here. So, if I was about to post something, I can post and I can target here. Not to the public, not to the whole public, but specifically to my customers. Only my customers can see this. And the cat people can see this. So now these two groups of people will see this post, not the public. From here I can also select collections. If I had collections, they would be listed here. I don't have collections, so I need to create one. That's what we're looking at here, collections. Featured collections. One day, probably, you can get featured here too. Everyone explores, everyone goes to collections, this randomly changes all the time. Maybe your collection will show up here, your group of posts on a topic will show up here. How and why? Well, that's the proprietary trade secrets of Google+. But basically you're sharing interesting content, you're building followers, uh, you're getting fame, and popularity breeds popularity. So then perhaps one day you'll be underfeatured. In the meantime, you can follow collections, and you'll see the stuff here. And any collections you create are listed under yours. Let's say I will create a collection. I'm going to call this Gluten Free Fair. I can call it anything I want. But whatever you type here and in the tagline are things that could get you found when someone searches. Remember I searched some hashtags and such and it recommended some communities and some collections? Well that's because those hashtags, those keywords, were added to my title of my collection or my description. Tagline. Only the best in hashtag healthy living So now it has a hashtag. When I'm creating this, you know, I choose a name, I choose a tagline. Is it public or not? Only let this community be viewed by your circles. That is, those that you have connected with, your followers. You may not want that. You may want your collections to be public for anyone to stumble upon them, enjoy them, and follow you. If you've got it set to your circles, only the current zero followers of yours will see this. 
if only you want to see this, you can set that. And you've got custom, which you then target it to a different circle more than one. <coughs> I would recommend keep that public so that anyone can find it. Create, and then on the next screen you can do a little branding for this. You can choose a graphic. It doesn't seem like you can upload your own graphic at the moment. No, you can't read it. Pick a photo. Upload. So it's not too obvious. If you want to upload your own photo, you have to first pick a photo. And then upload a photo. I can do a little bit then of design here. Not a lot of colors to choose from, but you can choose a color. <coughs> Visible to the public. And there was a note on the previous screen. If you set your collection to, to a specific circle, you cannot change it to public later. So when you create this, you have to decide early on, is it public or not? You can't choose later. And this one down here, don't worry about that. That's a good thing. Just leave it on. And I save. So now if I look at my community here, I can then add to it directly, and it'll say here, my, my collection, I mean. I'm going to add this to a collection, which is delineated with that symbol. Where did you click to get to that screen? Uh, I saved my community and it automatically went to it. If you don't see this screen, you can also, when no, you're I back. I that one, it was the one after that. The one that you, you were able to save it to. Show. This? Oh, it's oh, just it's adding a edit. post. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. If uh, you can also get to it by, via the home screen post, and then I have to select up on here public, cat stuff. So this is the more modern way to share something on Google+. Put it in a community so it's organized. So when someone searches up here, you, it, they can find your stuff. And um, communities are very useful. Google+, Plus is really, really, I'm, I mean collections are very useful. Google+, Plus is really promoting them. <clears throat> But communities are the big one, which we'll talk about in a moment. Question? You have to, uh, when you create a post, you have to publish it uh, publicly first before you can determine what circle it goes to? No, you have to do that at the moment that you're publishing it. So when I'm writing something, at this moment is where I select its, 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 its reach. Because if I post something, so I posted something over here, you know, 44 minutes ago. If I go back to it, back to edit it, it doesn't, doesn't let me change it after the fact. So when you create the post is when you choose to make it public, put it in a collection or community. Now, I like communities 10 times better. Let's click on communities. You will see recommended, member, and yours. You can create communities, but I don't recommend for you to create communities. Communities are like the classic forums or message boards. Communities are places where people congregate on Google Plus on a specific topic. You have to search for a collection, or maybe it appears for you. You have to, you know, a person has to try a little hard to find you, your, to find your collections. If instead 
you join communities, you have a built-in audience. I have zero followers, but if I join the photography community, there are 2.3 million people here. So don't click join yet on any of these. But let's say under recommended. If any of these strike your fancy, click on any one of them. Not join or ask to join. Just click on the thumbnail of any of these communities. <clears throat> and so people or companies are posting in this community. And the point of that is Allison Ivy may have 20 followers. Two followers. She just joined Google+. And then she posts to the photography community, she's actually now reached 2.3 million that care about this topic. So she's reached 2 million and 2 people. Same thing for Olinka and Emma and IG Gaming. So it doesn't have to be specific people, it can be companies. This <coughs> particular community is all about photography. My company, I'm a wedding photographer. This could be a place for me to post my stuff to get more followers, to get more clients. There's two million potential people. The way that I actually can take advantage of this is I have to join a community. So don't join a community just because it says join. You want to first vet the community. You first want to click the community. What are they about? What are they posting? And I have a bunch of rules for you here. Suggestions. Community suggestions. Join communities of at least 1,000 people. 1 million, 2 million people is a lot of people, a lot of potential customers. Great. But let's say, because we can search, remember, we can search and find posts, collections, and communities. So let's say you're searching for gluten-free cookies community. And I find one, but it's got 12 members. 1% 1 of 12? 1. <coughs> Rounding up. So try to join communities of at least 1,000 people. More of a critical mass of people for them to follow you, interact with you, buy your products, etc. <coughs> if you're getting, you know, 900... 877, close enough perhaps, but if you're getting, you know, 100 people in a community, you're probably not going to cut it. Can you build your business on the back of 100 people? I would also suggest <clears throat> check out the community and see how active it is. Check the quality of the activity. There might be a thousand members, but it tells you on the corner that the last post was seven days ago. People are not that active. People use this, these things every day. <clears throat> so if the last post in a group of a thousand was a week ago, this is not a very active community, no one's gonna see your stuff. As for the quality, you want to look at what people have posted. This one was four minutes ago. This one was six minutes, seven minutes. You want to look at what people are posting, and you want to see the quality, meaning these little numbers below the post. Like on Twitter, we saw numbers. How many retweets? How many favorites? And such. We get these things here as well. On Facebook and on Twitter, they're called, they're, they're, it's a favorite or a like. You enjoy something. On Google+, Plus, they call it the plus one. A plus one is someone enjoyed your content. And this tells you, this one's got two plus ones, this one's got one, this one's got ten people really like this. Ten people click this. This one in South Australia, three, I'll well, click like. So now four, it's got four. The point here that I'm saying is, you've got a community of several people, but almost no one is liking the stuff, or no one is commenting. You're going to see comments right below. No one is sharing it, then maybe it's not a good community. People are just posting and posting and spamming, and you're going to get lost in the crowd also. No one is going to share your stuff, like your stuff, comment on your stuff. 
And so check also the quality. I can't tell you. Make sure everything's got five likes. I can't tell you of a hard value. You have to look at a community and see, yes, yeah, got some good activity here. This is some activity there. This one's got no comments. What I would say about activity, this works for all the networks with different names, different variations. But you have the like, you have the uh, comment, you have the share. Twitter calls it a favorite. Google Plus calls it a plus one. Facebook calls it a like. Comment is a comment. They all call it comments. Or uh, actually, Twitter, uh, they, they call it a uh, reply. A reply, a comment, same thing. And then share. Twitter calls it a retweet. Um, I think Google Plus calls it a, a, uh, a reshare. Different names for the same thing. A way for someone to see your stuff on Twitter, on Google+, on Pinterest, on Snapchat, etc., etc., and like it. And the order that I put them here also matters in that going from like to share, one is more valuable than the other. The like is the least valuable. I'm not saying it's bad to get a like. I'm just saying it's least valuable because it's so throwaway. I see something, I like it, I move on. What's next? I see something else, like it, move on. What's next? I don't process it too well. Does uh, Google follow the same idea as uh, Facebook, for example? If we're on the same network and you like something, uh, I might be seeing things you liked. Yes. Yes, so Facebook is similar that, that, it, right? that it will help this content be shown to more of your friends and such. When you click a, a like the first time, it will live, give you a little pop-up. I zoomed by it, but a little pop-up happened. Like stuff to help people find more stuff. So yes, it also works. So it has some value. I do rank it the lowest, but it has some value because people just click and like and move on. People plus one and move on. The next level up is that someone actually took a little bit of effort to click on the post and uh, reply. Now, I can't reply because I'm not part of the community. Don't worry yet. But there would be a button to reply. That was a little bit more effort because someone actually took the time to write something. It may simply be something like, great, or nice. Or, okay, it may be one of these kinds of replies that is not that meaningful. But what is useful about someone commenting on your stuff is that that shows you someone really cares about your stuff enough to take a moment to tell you about it. That would be great then for me to follow that account. Then they may follow me back. So comments are useful. Replies are useful on all the networks because that helps me identify people that are interested in that I can follow. A share is another level up that's also very valuable because this helps my content get spread to more people. I share something on Twitter, a great photo, someone then retweets it, and now their 50 followers saw it in addition to my 7. So 57 people saw it. On Google+, Plus, someone's got 1,000 followers. I've got 17. Someone then clicked that share. It went to 1,017 people. Actually, the highest level, the follow, that's the highest level of this interactivity. That I actually get people to follow me so that every time I post something new, they will be the first to see it and then buy the product, share it, comment, whatever. That's the highest one, that's the hardest one to get. Because it's easy to click plus one, it's a little harder to think of something nice to write, it's a little harder maybe to share it, and the hardest is to, to get a follow. But the better, the more content you share on a regular basis, the better chance you have of getting followed. So these are my recommendations for communities. And once you've satisfied all of those requirements, then you click join. Because the point of joining is that now, after a join, After a join, I have the ability to post into that community. I did not have the ability to post until I joined it. Now I can reach 2 million people. Now that I've joined, I can post here. And I'm 
part of the community. Notice the icon up here. I'm in the photo community. You can only share one thing at a time in each community. You cannot share the same thing on multiple communities, one at a time. So now I have zero followers. Actually, now I can potentially have two million followers. And then I'll say here, warning, read the rules of the community. These communities are made by regular people or companies on Google+. They are not made or endorsed by anyone in Google+. I can create a community. Remember, there was a box at the top. Create a community. Anyone can create a community. Anyone can run it how they want. Anyone can make strict rules, and if you break those rules, your post is deleted. Best case scenario. Worst case scenario, you're kicked out of the community, and you lost two million people read the rules. The rules of the community are either going to be listed on easily here on the left or sometimes it's hidden inside of the inside of the little box, the little three dots here. But whenever you think about joining a community, look around, look for about community, rules of community, look for something that tells you what are the rules. You don't want to run afoul of the rules. We hope you will share your pictures and enjoy the photographs of the community focusing on landscapes, space, HDR, wide angle, and beaches. Well, mine's about weddings. Does that mean I can't share here? Maybe. Maybe not. These communities are also run by moderators. These, again, these are run outside of the control of, of Google+. People create these communities. Let me check out this Android community. 1 million. 1.7. I haven't joined yet. Right away at the top no spam and a big old post here pinned here so that you always see it don't break these rules all about Android you abide by these rules no spam specifically on the left here so number one don't spam linking or referring to anything not Android related okay advertising another Google Plus community this community the people behind it say, don't come to our community and talk about another community. I didn't see that rule on the other community. Every, rule, every community is different, run by different people. Some are run really well and you know, collaboratively. Some are dictatorships. And you have no recourse if you get kicked out of it. I personally have been kicked out of a community, and I'm a good guy. I didn't post anything bad. I just didn't post the things that the moderator loved. The moderator wanted certain things on their community, and I thought I was posting along those lines. I posted too many wrong things, and now I'm out of that community, and I can't get back into it. I've gone and complained at the Google Plus Help community. There is, it's in here somewhere, Google Plus Help. Join it right away so that you can keep up to date. Somewhere here, Google Plus Help. Uh, Google Plus for Small Businesses, there's also a community there you've got to look into. And I went there to the Google Plus Help community, and I said, Here's the post that I posted. I followed the rules. What can I do? And they said, we cannot police communities. It's the people behind the community. If the moderator of the community runs it a certain way, they run it that way. We can't do anything about it unless they're breaking the terms of service and putting violence and hate speech and all of that bad stuff. Then they won't do anything about it. These are run by the people for the people. And sometimes the person is a dictator. So make sure you read the community rules follow the community rules. This one's so easy. A place to keep in touch with others, food bloggers. Well, if I write something not about food, am I going to get kicked out? Probably. Read the rules of the community. They all change. Sometimes they also write here, who's the moderator? So you can get in touch with them. Sometimes they don't. But the moderators will be, will be marked they'll say moderator and there can be more than one moderator some of these say ask to join like this gaming community that will mean that if I click the button ask to join someone in the community will get a notification and go to your profile and see what you're about you're not about gaming why would we let you in here you're not about food photography why would we let you in here that's why you want to post three to five to ten things just like Twitter that's why you want to fill in your bio that's why you want to 
put in your picture and such. And the big idea for Google+, Plus, the big secret of Google+, Plus, is use communities. Join as many as you want, post to them, but read the, read the rules. And this is how I get the most activity of any of the networks. I share the same thing or similar things on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, and I always get more activity on Google+, because there's a vibrant community, a vibrant group of communities in Google+. I always have the question, and I'm surprised no one's asked it yet. Isn't Google Plus dying? People always bring up that question because they read an, a sensational article about it. One million active people. Almost a million. Two million active people. No, Google Plus is not dying. It's just that the pundits love to punditize about things. And I've been using it since 2012 for businesses, and it works. The trick is communities. If you're only posting on your home screen and you're only posting to collections, it's harder for you to reach people because this assumes people can find you. Yeah. Why not go get found in a community? Mm -hmm. Question. Speaking of communities, uh, what's, what's the criteria to use to show your posts? It's by time? It's a, in the community? Yeah, in the community. It's time. It's time. So if you Five have minutes a community ago. that you probably have 2 million members, it's going to be updated fairly quick. Yeah. So your chances of uh, being seen throughout the day are relatively lower. Lower, yeah. yeah. So oh, that's... So we the same thing several times. Which I wouldn't, because the community probably will say that's spam. Gotcha. So that's the downside of it all. You want to join communities of at least a thousand, but then there's a certain point that it's too many people. Maybe a million member community is too big. Five minutes ago this was posted. 10 minutes ago, 6 minutes ago, and I posted something 30 <coughs> minutes ago, which is three screenshots, three screenfuls down. So this is one of the rules of myself that I break all the time. I still join million member communities. I just know that I'm not going to get the huge amount of views all week long like I might have from a more close-knit close community. But I might get a big surge of views and such from a million member community if I've got a great photo and a link and such. That is not enticing me. But that is not that. It's like, you know, a rainbow threw up. This one over here, you know, it's still about the content. Where you publish it, but it's about the content. We're just about out of time now, actually. Um, one final question, and then we've got to wrap it up. Okay. We still have more to talk about, but again, explore this stuff on your own. If you're not logging into Twitter or Google Plus over the weekend, do it. And I'll remind us next time how to delete this and add more managers and all of that. We're out of time. A class is about to come in. I'm going to upload the videos. If you were new today, make sure you took the ad code and enrolled on the website. Don't just take the sticker. You have to enroll on the website. Make sure you signed in legibly. You can sign out if you want, but you don't have to. So make sure you signed in. Don't forget your stuff here. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Could you, could you save your Twitter notes to your to the, um, I'm gonna save my notes right now, yes. If we want to delete this page, how do we do that?